All right, so I'm gonna go over a uh, tier list really quick on some of the bosses for the DLC for Elden Ring. Give me one second here. I'm just gonna adjust something. All right, so let me go over my criteria for why I'm gonna rate them the way I'm rating. Uh, a few things I'm not gonna include, and it's because this is the big issue with every single boss in the DLC. And it's just prevalent with every boss. It's insane. They all do large amounts of damage and they are extremely aggressive they're relentless uh, the combination of having high damage and always attacking it doesn't really give the player a chance to learn the pattern of the boss they mess up once and they immediately die they're not all one hit kills but it honestly feels that way sometimes two hits maybe the thing is, you're dying almost immediately just because you made one mistake. This means you're fighting the boss maybe several times, 20 times, 50 times, uh, 100 times, really depending on who you are and how, how well you know the game. And it, at that point, it becomes really unfun, right? But I'm not going to include the aggressiveness and the high amounts of damage that the boss do because they all do it it's a problem with all of them um so let's go ahead and continue and uh just so you know all i'm gonna be doing to rate these bosses is base it on their design how fun i had while fighting the boss and how interesting i found their abilities Uh, I am going to judge how the camera reacted in the combat, although that's not part of the boss. The fact is the camera is a major part of the experience when fighting the boss. So it's going to be included in me rating the boss. If the camera's out of control, it makes the boss fight almost unbearable. All right. We're going to start off with the guy you're probably going to meet first in the game. Um, you're going to probably see them just kind of walking around because that's what they do. They go on a walkabout. And it's going to be the Furnace Golem. Now, the Furnace Golem, I'm placing him here in the C rank, right there at the bottom. Um, they kind of act like the... Um, what were they called? The Erd Tree Spirit Guardians, I think. I can't remember. Uh, mainly because they, they drop the the cracked tears you know the the things they use for your mixtures so when you beat these they usually drop that as well as some additional loot uh, it's random it's not random it's just different for each uh each furnace golem one thing i really found interesting about the furnace golem is their design they look monstrous monst monstrously huge uh they are really intimidating but the fight itself is extremely boring there's two versions of the boss, one that has protected guarded legs and one that uh, doesn't have protected guarded legs. They have like wooden pallets, which is kind of funny because uh, <laughs> that's the only thing protecting their legs. Either way, the ones with the wooden pallets are, or without the armor, just beat the legs until they fall down, fall down then uh, run up and critically strike the uh, special animation hoo-ha. Uh, business right you do your wampa damage and it, it takes massive massive damage you do that maybe three two times the thing dies you dodge the fire by jumping it because it shits fire on the ground and you just double jump that not a very fun boss um although he looks extremely cool one thing i really found uh interesting about their appearance is that they, they seem to have fire golem faces <clears throat> Now, I'm not sure if anybody's uh, familiar with the lore, but if you are, I'd, I'd like you to let me know. Are the fire golems be or the fire giants, are they being used to fuel these furnace columns? Because it kind of looks that way because you'll see like the fire giant's face on the furnace golem. It's like part of part of the decoration. Now, that'd be pretty sick if that was the case. I just I don't know. I, I don't know too much about the lore about these uh, furnace columns. Right. <coughs> the second version of this furnace golem, uh, they have armored legs. The only way to kill them is to drop like the, um, to find a way to get above them uh, near their their head where you can see the opening and you throw the giant cracked or, or the giant um, pots, the giant exploding pots in there. It blows up, does damage. I wasn't going to waste my time doing that, so I never did. I just know that's how you do it. 
All right, uh, enough with the Furnace Golem. Not that interesting. Very really cool looking. That's about it. Here we have the Black Gold Knight next. I'm going to place him here because he's the same of the same. Um, he's like every other human uh, spirit ash encounter or invader encounter type, type of boss. Mm, the only thing that makes him really cool is that he has this crossbow with him. And it's pretty sick because he shoots like this machine gun crossbow uh, fire. And it's it's... It's awesome. It looks cool. Uh, the boss itself, he uses a great sword, and he has this, the same great sword animation. He has one healing pot. Um, nothing special about it. Not hard. Not easy. It's just the same of the same. So I'm gonna place him right there in the B. He, I, I had an okay time fighting him. Um, let's see. Next, I will go ahead and probably the first actual boss, the first story boss that you guys will encounter. Now, I was thinking about placing him here in A because I really like his design. Yeah, the way he fights, he contorts and spins and does all this crazy shit. It's like fighting the Avatar. I believe I stated that before. Um, he's really cool. Uh, he, he uses a bunch of different elements in different phases. The problem is um, I didn't have this problem because I... Um, <coughs> I used a, a summon to fight him because I wasn't going to deal with the nonsense with the camera because uh, that's the issue I'm going to have here. The camera would cause him to, well, when he jumped on top of you, the camera would kind of go crazy and it was kind of difficult to, to track him. So it was really annoying um, because of the camera, I'm placing him in a B. I'm placing him down here with the average. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that he's such a cool looking character and... Um, when the camera's not freaking out, he's a fun boss. Then, yeah, if it wasn't for the camera issue, I'll probably put him in an A. Um, there's a second version of him, which is basically all the same issues, except it has the death blight, which makes the fight even worse. <laughs> uh, essentially, with that second version of that boss, you got you to gotta hang back when you have the death blight. So it's not something I want to do in a fighting game, which is not fight. <laughs> I run away and just stand still until the death blight goes away. Then I go back in. Nah, not a very fun mechanic. Um, I did not like that. So I'm going to keep both um, the second version and the original version of the Divine Beast Lion Dancer in a B. So I only need one image. So that's where he stays. Um, this, this dragon. Uh, same dra same issue with every dragon boss. Um, they're so large and they kind of move around a lot. The camera the camera gets in your way. It's annoying. Uh, the biggest problem, he is the exact same thing. He's the exact same dragon you fought before the DLC. Except this one does ghost flame. Woo! <laughs> Nothing special about him. I did not like. Uh, I, it's not like I hated it. It's just there wasn't anything special about it. Kind of lame. I was not excited about fighting him. It was not fun fighting him. It was just the same, same, except he was Ghost Flame and the same camera issues. Placing him here, did not have fun fighting these bosses, uh, but I did it because, you know, I had to. Now, this is, a, this is a special one here. I like this one. Relana Twin Moon Knight. She is probably going to be the second story boss you guys encounter. And I'm putting her up here in the S tier because I love this boss. Uh, she had a variety of attacks that made her very unique. Um, in her second phase, these attacks evolve into a more difficult version of their base form. Uh, she's pretty um, easy to read. She telegraphs pretty well. Now, she's constantly attacking, but again, that's an issue with every boss. Uh, she has a really cool... Uh, look about her she's just tall <laughs> she's just a tall lady she's a tall lady with two swords that uses magic and then beats you with her swords uh her combos are very quick they're not really one hit kills but they will cause you to stagger um because she'll follow up one at one combo with another combo with another combo and those when she started in, in uh, enchanting her swords with her spells uh it gets even harder now if you can cancel her transformation with by staggering her it's going to make the fight easy. If you can't stagger her and she goes through her transformation, the fight gets even harder. 
So good luck with that. Um, I'm honestly putting her on an S tier. She was difficult, but the perfect amount of difficulty. And she was she was manageable. If you are a veteran um, a little ring player, you will get through her eventually once you learn her pattern. She was a fun boss with uh, the camera was great. And um, there's really no issues that I have with her. I think she was the she's the a pretty good example of what a boss should be. Um, the next one's a bear. So because I'm biased, I'm going to put him in S. Uh, for some reason, I just feel like I have to put him here. I don't know what it is. Um, but if I'm being honest, it's just a room bear with extra abilities. He'd be just slightly, uh, yeah, actually, I'll place him right here. But... He's a bear, so yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so he's just a room bear. He's got some abilities, uh, nothing special. Um, he does more damage, more HP. It's a room bear. Let's put him where he actually he actually belongs. It makes me sad. I was excited to see another bear boss, but um, I'm I, the reason I brought these, even though they're not interesting, why I brought them on this list, is because. You need to know that just copy and pasting and then recoloring a boss is not okay. This is not okay. This was a DLC. This The DLC was so good. It does not deserve this. Um, and just to kind of be out there, be straight. These are not all the bosses. These are just the bosses I found interesting and thought I should kind of uh, make a comment on or at least kind of drive a point that's why i have these two here the point i'm driving with these two is you can't just copy a boss give it a different color and say look new boss no it's not it's the same it's the same same with the same issues um at least this boss was a little easier to deal with because the camera wouldn't go too crazy but with a boss like this it gets annoying i love this little guy i love this little guy he's my little buddy uh, the Lamenter. Oh, wait. Uh, I'm sorry. The the, the bear. Uh, he actually has a name. Um, the bear's name is... Ralva the Great Red Bear. <laughs> the Great Red Bear. All right. Uh, anyways, back to this little guy. The Lamenter. I love him. He was hilarious. He wasn't even... This is a perfect example of a boss that isn't hard... But it's still a good boss. He was an amazing boss fight. I loved fighting this little guy. He's my little buddy. He's my little labyrinth catacombs buddy. I can't remember if it was a catacombs or a cave. But he was awesome. Uh, the cool thing about him is he eventually goes all shadow clone jutsu on you. And uh, creates a bunch of duplicates of himself. And then you got to find the right one. It's like a little mini game within the boss. And it was really fun. Um, I enjoyed it. He was easy. Uh, his he didn't do like crazy amounts of damage, but he still he still kind of hurt. This was a good boss. Now the only reason I have him in an A is because he wasn't he wasn't the right amount of difficulty. He honestly was way too easy, but he was fun. This is how you can make a great boss and still not be difficult. The Lamenter is a great example. I loved it. Uh, Ooh, the golden hippopotamus. Golden hippopotamus. Um, I loved his design. I loved how he looked. I was so excited when I found him. He was He's kind of adorable in his own hippopotamus way. He's a D. He's a D because his abilities don't really make a lot of sense. It, it feels like even though I'm dodging, they're still hitting. Um, it wasn't quite right. I did not like it. Uh, and not not just because I didn't like it, it just didn't feel like it was working correctly. I did not like this Golden Hippopotamus fight, especially in the arena that they put us in. It looks large when you first go in, but then you see this guy make his do his uh, attacks, and he, you see his abilities, and uh, he has a charge attack that kind of covers the whole arena. He then starts kind of like running around. It's too small of a space to fight this large of a creature. Um, and again, his attacks also, the hitbox, something's off about them. I'm not too sure what. It, it feels like dodge rolling isn't really effective against him. In the end, I just bursted him down with uh, the lion's claw, uh, great sword, just 
wailing on him, staggering him nonstop, keeping keeping him in like a stun lock, basically. Um, but in the end, as much as I loved his design, the camera became an issue as well. Uh, the camera would go crazy. I couldn't see anything. The boss itself was very boring fight because of the stage. I feel like if it was in a much larger area, this would be a good fight. It'd be a decent fight. It'd be a B tier fight um, because he still has issues with his uh, attack animations kind of not being right. I don't know if that was just me. Let me know if you guys had the same issues too with this hippopotamus guy. All right. Uh, Mesmer. Also D. And I'm going to explain why. I love this. Uh, maybe part of the reason why he's in the D tier is because of how hyped I was for this fight. I saw him in the trailer. He was advertised. He was basically the mascot for the DLC. I fought him and was immediately disappointed. He's basically a Melania clone. And I'll explain why I think he's a Melania clone. He has... The the only thing that made Melania hard was her water well her waterfowl attack water flow whatever the fuck it was called he basically has three separate versions of that and then the the other part that made her kind of difficult but which you can eventually learn how to di uh, how to dodge Melania's ability her bloom ability she has two versions of that one in her base form and one in her second form he has three versions of that. Uh, basically he does the, the water foul, whatever, uh, he does his version of it. And then one where he dives the floor, one where he dives the floor and it explodes. And then one where he dives the floor and it blooms into a fiery explosion. Um, so that's, what's frustrating. This is how similar he is to Melania. So in Melania, she has this bloom ability, right? One that she does in her first form where she jumps up and dives and it does a little boo, like a little flower explosion, a little rot explosion. He does the exact same thing with a slightly larger area. He actually opens every single fight after your first encounter with him with that move. And it's an insta kill if you're not high enough level or have enough damage reduction to his abilities. You die immediately. So you got to learn to dodge it. You have to learn to dodge it. Um... And the thing is, he has three versions of it. He does one with the explosion, and then he does one where um, it doesn't really... Ex he does one where he dives, it explodes, and then a bunch of swords pop up. And then the one he opens with is he dives in. He It's a fiery bomb thing. It, it, he dives, he attacks... Uh, does the initial damage and then it blows up again as a secondary damage and then when he, you get him into a second form he does the exact same thing with a much larger explosion as he turns into a giant snake it feels like they took one mechanic and just gave it three separate versions of that that they took one ability gave it three separate uh phases to that ability and that seems extremely lazy to me but it's not just that oh no not the not just the bloom ability that they copied from Melania. It's that waterfowl that I mentioned earlier. He does one where he does a series of combos. He dives at you. He's striking. He he swings left, swings right. Blah blah blah. If you don't dodge it perfectly, he does a huge chunk of your damage. And then he eventually ends that combo with a dive. In the first uh, version of the attack, he just dives, and that's it. In the second version, he dies, does an explosion, and swords pop up. That's the one I mentioned before. It's a it's a bloom, right? But it's a bloom combined with the combo attack, which is so frustrating. And then the third version of that, he does it while he's in his second phase. And it's almost nonstop. He spams that move almost the entire fight. It is insane. And then if he's not doing that, he's doing a series where he's just dashing across the, the, the battle arena with being in this like giant snake form thing. And that's also annoying, but at least that's easy to dodge. Either way, uh, they basically copied Melania's Waterfowl and then replicated it three times. And then they copied her Bloom and then did that three times as well, except with uh, the Bloom, they essentially combine it with the combo. So whenever he combos, sometimes he ends that combo with a Bloom. And you know when he's going to end it with a Bloom because he does a... Um, <coughs> He does a multi-strike with his spear where he stabs multiple times and there's like a, a red fiery glow to his spear and then he ends it with a, an explosion and swords pop up. 
But that's not all that they copied. So if you know, Melania does this charge grab move where she grabs you, throws you up, and stabs you with her katana sword thing. They did the exact same thing for Mesmer. He charges you, grabs you, throws you up. The animation almost seems exactly the same. They literally got Melania, cloned her, uh, m give him more of the same broken abilities, and then they said, we need to make him different. What do we do? Uh, some dude said, hey, what, what if instead of rot, it's fire? And I guess they win with that. He seems like a very lazy boss. Um difficult for the wrong reasons and he he sucked i i just don't think he deserves to be anywhere near the 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 s a or b list uh, i may put him in c maybe no i'm not i'm gonna keep him below the hippo i think he's worse than the hippo he's a difficult boss uh he's a fake difficult he's difficult because of He's a gimmick boss to me. They, they took a gimmick from Melania and then just gave him more of that and then increased the damage and increased his health. I do not like Mesmer. Uh, there's no way of fixing him, I, I think, because even if you make him easier, which I don't think making a boss easier fixes it, honestly. Uh, it doesn't make the boss better. In the end, he's still going to be a clone of Melania. And I think the reason I have him in the D tier is because I was so hyped to fight him only to find out that he was nothing special. And um, if I wasn't hyped to fight him, I'd probably have him in B or C. But because I was so amped up to get ready and fight with him and uh, the, you know, the, the, the bigger the hype, the, the, the further the fall, I guess. The taller the, <laughs> the taller the hype. The taller my expectations, the further the fall it was in this situation. And Mesmer disappointed me pretty bad. All right, enough of him. Uh, we know he's a disappointment. Let's go on next. Let's go on to the next. Uh, oh, now I like I like this next boss that I'm about to talk about here. Um, her name is actually let me see here. I think it's Leda or something like that. Yeah, Leda, L-E-D-A. Uh, when you fight her, you're actually fighting a bunch of other followers of Mikola. Uh, let me put her here. The reason I'm going to keep her in the B, it's because she's the same as the same, um, right? It's just, it's more like an invader slash uh, Ash of, uh, Ashes of War kind of battle here. Uh, not Ashes of War. What am I talking? Spirit, Spirit Ash fight. Uh, she's just more humans using, uh, or more humanoid creatures using the, the player weapon. So it's kind of like a, you know, a PVP situation, but, but, you know, with, PCs. They just look like players. The reason I actually like this more than the other B tier bosses is because you are fighting multiple, which is something slightly different. You're fighting more than one. Uh, you're fighting three at a time. I fought one at a time because I, I said, I'm going to use my greatsword and I'm just going to melt their health. And that's what I did. I just melted them and then went on to the next. So before the other ones can spawn in, I was already killing the first one. Um, but they were all cool because they were using new weapons in the game. And there are basic there is basically a showcase of the new weapons, and it was neat. You had a melee fighter, like a, a fisticuff dude. Uh, you had her, which I think she's using a uh, light greatsword. I'm not entirely sure. Alita, she's using the light greatsword. I forgot which one was it, uh, that it was dry leaf or Ailey's. That was the melee, the the fisticuffs. And I forgot what the other guy was doing because I I murdered him and like I I, I killed him so fast that I do not know what weapon he was using because i saw him take maybe like one swing before i kept on stun locked with a with the uh lion's claw ability with a great sword um either way that was fun uh it was cool it wasn't too difficult uh if you if you let yourself get overwhelmed with all three fighters at the same time i can see how it can actually be pretty difficult um if you just burn them down really quick it's a it's a decent fight it's an easy fight all right uh, on to the next then Ooh, she was another easy fight, actually. She was an inc she was incredibly easy for how late in the game you actually fight her. But her design and her abilities were so fun. She was an amazing boss. She was so cool. She has like a scorpion tail and a centipede head, and she's riding in the center, kind of like she's mounted on the scorpion slash centipede. But the thing is, she is grafted into them. She's like part of them. 
uh, it's like a scorpion centipede human centaur. <laughs> and she was really fun to fight. Her abilities were really unique. I don't really have any tips on her because she wasn't too difficult of a boss. You just fight her normally as you would. You'll probably die a couple times until you uh, remember her patterns. Uh, she has like a roly-poly attack, uh, uh, an explosive kind of wave, kind of like the uh, perfumers do. Um, she's just a fun boss, and she's a cool-looking boss. She was amazing. I, I loved her. Her name is uh, Rom uh, Rom Romina Saint of the Bud. That's right, Romina Saint of the Bud. Uh, she was a great boss. This guy, I love this guy. This guy was also good. Um, I'm gonna place him here. He could be a little annoying because he eventually splits off into two, one being his horse and one being the guy on top. I I love the art and uh, just the concept for this guy because they're both missing their lower halves. So when I say they like run inside, they they crawl. They they are crawling inside because they don't have a bottom half. So they're just crawling really quick. Uh, eventually the top half splits off from the horse who is also missing his bottom half and they just uh they they double team you man and it's pretty sick there's this cool part in the fight where uh, i this like goo that they're spewing out i'm not sure if it's blood but it's some kind of like fluid it's really this gray muck that kind of it, it turns into a mountain as it's just spewing out from beneath them almost like he's just shitting he's making a ship mountain and rising on top of it and then from up there they do like a bunch of uh like this uh they do an, an area attack situation this guy does frost damage and um he does a bunch of cone attacks and then they do these like char uh, the horse does this charge where he goes back and forth while the guy with the <coughs> the large ass sickle just kind of attacks you so it can be a bit overwhelming but I do think the boss was overall pretty fun to fight. And the thing is, even though there were some issues with the camera, the overall design of the boss was so good. I just loved the uh, just I just loved the, the boss, the, the way he looks, the way he fights. Uh, I loved it so much. I'm going to keep him at the end of the A tier. Mm. I do think he's probably a B tier boss because the boss, the camera kind of gets in the way a little bit sometimes, um, mainly because there's two of them and it can it can be a little conflicting with uh, if you're using the auto lock system and you accidentally lock onto the wrong one, you're trying to lock into the other one and you got to do the unlock, 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 lock, 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 unlock, unlock, <laughs> unlock, lock, unlock, lock, unlock, lock, and it can be a little bit annoying, um, but he's still a really fun boss. He wasn't crazy hard all these bosses are hard okay i'm sorry i know i said they're easy but they're they're not all of them are pretty difficult in their own way none there's i don't think there's one crazy easy boss in the dlc there's some that are just easier than others um he was not crazy hard it took me a couple a couple tries i think it was six maybe five and then i was able to beat him uh as far as the uh, cause just cause it's a hard boss doesn't mean it's a fun boss. And just cause it's an easy boss doesn't mean it's a fun boss. For example, the hippo took me two tries. He's still a shit boss. I don't care. Um, I, it took me two tries to beat that hippo and I, I, I hated it. And it's because during that one fight, it was annoying. And the second fight I was trying to learn the patterns and I couldn't. And that's when I decided to just burn it out. Now this guy on the the horse, the half horse, the ha half horse, half man, he was pretty difficult. He was pretty hard, man. Um, and even though I said uh, Ro Rom Rom Romina, uh, let me see, what was her name? Was it Romina? And even though, yeah, Romina, Saint of the Blood. Even though I said she was easy, she's still kind of hard. There's not an easy boss, so don't don't feel bad when they kick your ass. Cause some of them I had to try multiple times. Uh, for example, uh, Relana, I had to fight her a bunch of times because she is a she is a hard boss, and she's still on the top of the list. Um, difficulty does not decide whether the boss is fun or not. All right, difficulty is just it's something else entirely and it doesn't decide whether a boss is fun Berlana is crazy hard she's on the top of the list Lamenter ridiculously easy he's on top of the list it's how fun it was when fighting the boss that's what decide that's what's deciding this tier list mainly how fun did I, how much fun did I have all right um i'm sorry i just had to uh i had to talk about that because this guy he's he's gonna be i i think he's gonna be different for everybody some people are gonna have an easy time some people are gonna have a hard time um in the end i think he's a really cool boss and he was fun to fight 
my second E, my second S tier. Now, yep, yep, yep. No, he's going to be on the top of the list. The introduction to him, his level, like his little, um, his mansion manor thing was cool to kind of walk around in. He has a servant that you get to talk to and he was fun to talk to too. Uh, yeah, he was very uh, ominous about what he had what, about what he had to say. The whole area that involved uh, Midra, Lord of the Frenzied Flame, the name, the title is just so cool too. And when you fight this guy, it is it is crazy because it, it, it's kind of uh, it kind of tricks you, puts you in this false sense of uh, security because you find him and he's just laying on the ground and you just beat the shit out of him. And you're like, oh, well, that was easy. And then he starts pulling this like sword spear from his skull and it is so graphic. It is intense. And then he's just like kind of screaming. And I was so disappointed that they cut away because I'm pretty sure it got gnarly, dude, because um, the spear eventually is pulled out of his body. It turns into a sword and his head's missing and it's replaced with the frenzied flame eye as a as his head it was so good and i was i was disappointed i didn't get to see that yeah but i'm pretty sure they did it because it was so gruesome it was it was gnarly as hell uh this guy was an amazing boss fight um now i i was thinking about not putting him here because the boss fight has a mechanic which is you know the madness uh the frenzied flame and there's really nothing you can do to reduce that uh, that kind of damage or that effect, which really sucks. Um, but you know what? That um, that problem wasn't enough for me to not put him here. I really loved the fight. It was great. Um, I actually had to use a shield in this fight because <laughs> he was pretty difficult. He was a hard boss. Again, another extremely hard boss that was fun. Uh, I'm going to keep him in the S here. I thought he was really cool. I, I love his design. I love the little story that came with him. And I love the mechanics involved. The camera was never an issue. It would always stay on him. And uh, he may be the best boss in the game. Hmm. He may be. I'm not sure yet because we still have four more bosses to talk here to talk about. Uh, let's see. Next boss is... Uh, Metter? Uh, let me see if I can get the name here. I know it's Metter is something of fingers. Um, let me get here really quick. Give me one second. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is Metter. Uh, or Metyr, M-E-T-Y-R, Mother of Fingers. That is actually her title. Uh, she's really cool. Uh, the design of the boss is amazing. Now, I'm not sure if I was overleveled by the time I got here because I was wandering around a lot. I didn't know how to get to her. But she was not too difficult of a boss. Her abilities were really neat. Um, beat her down pretty easily, though. Uh, she had a bunch of unique attacks. She does this spinning tornado thing. I didn't know how to dodge it, mainly because it wasn't hitting me. So I don't know how to dodge that ability because it would never hit me. But it looked cool. She'd just be spinning in the air doing like that tornado spin. And um, it was neat. It, she's uh, the, the thing is to, to activate her. She is a secret boss. You have to go to these island of like dildos. And then you got to blow into a dildo. And you got to do it in two places so there's two islands of dildos with two dangling dildos that you have to blow into um their fingers by the way or whatever you want to whatever you want to call it but it is it, it looks what it looks it looks like what it looks like and you have to blow into them uh, and then eventually you got to do this whole process of uh speaking to someone and then getting uh access to the secret location which are the bosses now these two locations are so cool um I don't know if you guys know about this one place where they're there. It's like a uh, they're called moving rocks. I'm talking about real life right now, like I IRL kind of stuff. And they're called moving rocks. And it's because the wind pushes them across the desert and it looks like the rocks are moving. 
um, when you go to these locations, these dildos are just kind of like sticking out of the sand and there's groove marks. So it looks like the, the, the fucking, the, like the dildos move around the sand and it's, it looks pretty creepy. I love the, I love the area in which you gotta, gotta go to, to unlock her location. And then when you eventually fight her, she's, she's the reason like all these hands are being summoned. You know, the, the hands that you fight, the large hand and the little baby hands, um, she creates them. It's really cool. It's a really fun boss. Uh, this, the lore with it, I'm pretty sure it's very interesting. I just don't know it too much. I, I, I liked her a lot. I'm going to go ahead and place her. I'm going to place her here. Yeah. Oh, my God. This boss. Uh, the Ska, the Skardu, the, the Scat Tree Avatar. What's it called? Let's see. Mm, the Skadu Tree Avatar, yeah. He was a ridiculously hard boss for me. And he was a large boss. But... He did not have the issue the other bosses have. You know why? The other large bosses? You know why he didn't have the same issue? They gave you enough area and they did the correct thing you should do with a large boss. This boss only has one move in which he jumps from one side of the room to the other and it's heavily telegraphed so you know when he's going to do it. For the most part, this boss is standing still and his abilities cover the 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 arena so he doesn't have to move ridiculously everywhere to cover the arena and he is still a hard boss and most importantly when you're targeting him you get the option to target his head or his body his head is actually pretty easy to hit and it's a weakness uh this dude has three phases right his abilities are easy to dodge he was a fun boss um he was a large boss i'm actually gonna probably play some and he was a hard boss. He, he wasn't easy for me. I died many times to him. I'm going to place him here. I'm actually probably going to place him. No, actually. No, that's too. Yeah, right here. He's not better than my little buddy. My little buddy's going to stay there. Uh, now, this guy, he had his own issues, right? Um, mainly because... Actually, he, I don't think he had any issues. Oh. Um, I actually had fun fighting this boss. He was hard. You eventually learn his mechanics. Yeah, I'm going to put him in S tier, actually. <coughs> I can't think of any complaints other than the design. <coughs> oh, sorry, I had something. Other than the design of the boss is, uh, it's pretty plain. He's like a wilted sunflower. Yeah, his design's kind of... It's not the most interesting, but the boss itself was a very fun boss fight. Yeah, I'm going to put him there. I think he was great. This... Uh, this guy. Bale the Dread Dragon. I'm going to place him here. I was thinking about putting him in the C tier, but when I think about it, I can actually fight these guys and have some kind of fun. This guy was not fun at all. He is an extremely hard boss, and it it's not e it's not even his mechanics are that are hard. The the boss abilities are interesting. He's really cool. He does a bunch of cool things where he flies around the stage, but as a melee fighter, it feels impossible because he covers the ground beneath him with a flame. And the thing is, he does, he spams this ability every time you're under him. And it is insane. I had to fight this guy so many times until I finally got a fight where he did not do that. I was basically, it was an RNG fight where I fought him until he did not do that. I had to keep fighting him until he said, you know what? Uh, I don't feel like doing, like burning my feet this time. So I guess you get to win. And that's what happened. And the camera, oh my God, the camera. The camera is so terrible. I can't see him. Um, I can't see him. It's, it's the camera goes fucking crazy. It's not fun. It was a it was a garbage fight for me. I did not enjoy fighting this dragon at all. Uh, so that's my opinion on this dragon here. I think he's a D tier boss. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the 
mechanics of the camera. The camera ruined what could have been a really good boss. And then one ability that basically makes it impossible for melee fighters. And then the lock on only lets you lock onto his head. And it is almost in it is so hard to hit his head with a melee weapon. And you're like, well, why didn't you just use a bow? I did. It's also really hard to shoot him with a bow. The only things that would work are spells. And the thing is, if you are a melee fighter, you probably don't have points in, in intelligence or in arcana. Uh, maybe some in faith, but not enough to actually do anything just to use a weapon, probably. If you're a melee fighter, this guy's going to be so hard. I don't know how it's going to feel for the casters, but as a person who uses a, a, a weapon or a bow, this is not a good fight because you cannot lock onto anything other than his head. And I wanted to target his one good leg or his torn leg. And I couldn't because I had to unlock the camera. So I had to remove the lock on and fight this guy without a camera, which made it ridiculously hard because I had to look for him manually while turning the camera because locking onto him was pointless because I can only target the head. And if you're targeting the head, you can't hit any part of his body because of the way his body is shaped and the way his head is located. Every time you target the head, you're going to miss every other part of his body unless you're standing right underneath his butthole. But you don't want to be there because he's going to spin. He's going to breathe fire all over his feet. It's it's just it's a terrible fight. It's a terrible fight for two reasons. And I think this fight can actually be fixed pretty easily. Create a second target on the legs where you can lock onto. Make it so he doesn't spam the burning the leg part. <laughs> Uh, that one you can keep, actually, because it, it is dodgeable. I, j I was just shit at dodging it. Um, you probably don't have to remove that. Honestly, to make the fight better, make it so you can target the leg. Holy shit, make it so you can target the leg, please. Um, let's see. What else can you really do? Because the camera's going to be shit. There's nothing you can do about that. The camera's just bad. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the next one, and it's going to be the final boss here. It's going to be Radon. Or his new title, Promised Consort Radon. He was the hardest boss that I had to deal with in this game, in this DLC. He was so hard. I fought him the most. I fought him more times than I did Mesmer. And he was the reason I actually had to change my build. I was a great sword user for the entire game, through the DLC, through the main content of the game, until I got to him. I needed to use shield and spear so i got me the um the fingerprint shield and then i went and also grabbed me the uh, serpent spear and leveled those up why did i level the serpent spear that's supposed to be a, a you know gimmick weapon for Riker? it is the only spear that i found that it scales off strength it has an a tier uh strength scaling so i took the spear um yeah so he's the boss that said hey i'm tired of your i'm tired of your using your great sword it's about time you learn the game on how to counter bosses he's the one that made me do it so i got my i got my shield and my spear and i went at it, it took me many tries and i eventually killed him <clears throat> he um this is a perfect example of an amazing boss this guy was the hardest boss I fought. I died to him more than anybody. It took me half a day to finally beat him. But there was never any camera issues. The area was large enough for me to fight him. And all his abilities are well telegraphed and dodgeable. I sucked. So I couldn't dodge him. <laughs> but if you're a good player, you can definitely dodge his attacks the area is wide enough for you to kind of kite and do a, a normal attack he's a he is a large character but the camera never had any issues <clears throat> and he probably didn't have issues because there was a wide enough area for him at least um yeah it, a wider a wider area is not gonna fix uh, the issue with bail that that guy is just he's it's a drag the dragon issues the large the very large uh, monster issues but uh, Radon didn't have camera issues. His abil abilities were telegraphed and are dodgeable. And um, 
the reason he was hard is because he uh, you just got to learn him once you learn him he, you're good to go uh he just has so many abilities that it takes a while to learn eventually you hit him in the second phase and again the problem that comes up with all these bosses is that he's relentless and super aggressive he has an ability his grab ability if he grabs you twice it's an insta kill it doesn't matter how much health you have or how much armor you have i'm not going to spoil that for you um i'm gonna go ahead and let you see what that does he was a great boss. He was hard. He was the hardest boss for me, and I had a fun time fighting and learning him. I'm going to place him up there. Yep. Uh, so it looks like it turned out pretty even for me, at least with my list. Let me know if you guys had different issues with any of these bosses. Um, I'm thinking about doing an intelligence run for casting or maybe a faith run or maybe a dexterity run for some blood loss, some blood builds. Uh, if you want to watch me, you can catch me over at Twitch. Uh, it's just going to be, you know... Uh, uh, twitch.tv slash sumo bear if you want to see me struggle and freak out and stress out over this uh, go ahead and comment below on what you thought about my tier list if you have any changes that you'd like to to make or if you thought I was wrong in something uh, go ahead and tell me how I was wrong and then I'll probably tell you I don't care <laughs> I'm just kidding I, I care a little bit but this is my list it is an opinion it's not a fact okay if you guys feel like a boss belong somebody uh, somewhere else on this tier list let me know i'd like to hear why you think that um but this is my honest opinion and if you guys want to talk about it you can hit me up on my stream i usually stream every day because i don't know what else to do or you can just leave a comment here below and uh let me know what you think i'll talk to you guys later i'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some sleep and watch some tv because this game stressed me the hell out <laughs> all right guys bye Bye-bye.